Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video we're going to be doing a long-awaited sewing room tour. I am a vintage creator and seamstress or sewist here on the internet. I like to sew vintage with vintage sewing machines and true vintage patterns with a little bit of vintage inspired patterns sprinkled in here or in there. I have been requested to make the this room tour for a really long time. Um, if you know anything about me, when I first started sewing, I did not have a designated sewing space. So instead we converted my tiny guest room closet into a sewing space that I could work out of and all it could fit was a singular desk. I had a pegboard for all of my notions and then my fabric and supplies were like sprinkled throughout the entire house in my old house. And so now I finally have a sewing space and it's been highly requested that I share that space and I've been holding on to it, trying to make it as perfect as possible, but it's gonna be a little while before I can get some more storage solutions and things like that. So I just wanted to share what I have um, pulled together in this like year and a half since I've been sewing in this space. So bear with me. Um, my room is not as clean as it could be, but it's also cleaner than it usually is. I wanted to give a little bit more of a realistic look of what my sewing room looks like and um, and how I would prefer to keep it as much as possible. So if you like sewing content, you like vintage content, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel. If you would like to follow me in real time, follow me over on Instagram at Serena underscore. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you can leave me a virtual tip on Ko-fi. And for exclusive content, I have a Patreon. So the links to all of that will be in the description below. I'd love to have you in my sewing circle on Patreon. And you can become a bobbin for $4 a month and you'll get access to exclusive content over there. So let's get into the video. I've divided my sewing room into two spaces. One side of the room holds all of my sewing machines that are in desk and they eventually have um, my other machines from my collection hanging on shelves on the wall. I have poured concrete walls because I'm in a basement so they're nice and strong enough to hold a lot of weight. The side where I sew in has all of my wallpaper which was custom wallpaper that I had drawn up by one of my favorite illustrators who designed all of my merch at atomic gg on instagram and it's custom paper that only i have and i'm so happy with how it turned out half of the room has that wallpaper and the other half is a solid green my favorite color and i figured that it would break up the busyness of the room but also give me a good backdrop to sew in the opposite side of the room where i was currently standing in houses all of my patterns this is my pattern bookshelf it's been around forever and I have these little bins that I bought from Walmart. They're the main stain paper rope baskets with liners and I need to make labels so that way I can label each of them but some holds, ex they all hold exclusively one type of pattern so they're separated by my kids clothes, dresses, suits, skirts, pants, things like that. So they're all organized and um, I keep a log in an app. It's a, called a pattern app. It's very generic and I keep a log of where I keep all of my patterns so that way I know what patterns are where and where to find them. So I just need to label the bins and that'll make it even easier to find. And then I have that storage container above it those containers I made with poster board and I could stand to make a couple more so that way I can keep my PDF patterns organized and then change the paper to match the wallpaper so everything matches in here. But overall, the like administrative pattern library side of my room needs to be reorganized and cleaned up because it's a little bit hectic. Here is my pegboard wall of notions. I got this pegboard from the home improvement store so it's not a fancy ikea pegboard it actually cost me twenty dollars and we cut it down to shape it goes from floor to um ceiling over here and i have all of the notions that i need and i get to display a lot of like my vintage notions i have my like modern needles here but i have my vintage sewing machine needles there i have lots of vintage buttons button making kits 
belt buckles, my scissors, and um, all of these came from like these little storage things came from the hardware store as well. I think it was like a pack for like $11 and you got like the, the little shelving pegs. Um, I found this to be a lot cheaper. I think all in all, it was like a $30 investment for so much pegboard space and all of the peg accessories. I keep my rulers right here and just all of my findings and things of that nature. I am able to store and display. That way I always know what I have or I always know most of what I have. The loose buttons and stuff are kind of all over the place. I have a, you know, little vintage miscellaneous button jar. And I keep all of my Cricut mats up here as well. And so I really like having a pegboard. So here's my cutting table. I could stand to keep it clear more often, but I just use it for the most part for storage. And then I use this tiny space where I have my cutting mat for my rotary tool. I intend on making like a extension for this so that way it is longer for my bigger dresses because right now as it stands even with the clear table it's easier for me to sew on like cut on the floor just because there's just more space for larger skirt pieces and putting the full pattern layout at once so this is a folding table so if you um remove the pads from the top of it um, it you can collapse the legs together fold it down and kind of push it against the wall but now that I have a designated sewing space I do not have to do that this is where I have my sewing machines that don't have desks which I don't intend on making a desk for them or buying desks for them I instead want to keep them on the wall so that way I can have easier access to bringing them down and I want to use this space here like where my scrap bin is I want to start doing a better job of dumping my scraps instead of holding on to every single piece of scrap. And then I also want to add some sort of cube shelving here or make a custom desk that has storage underneath it for more crafts and stuff. Because right now when I use like my hot glue gun and things like that, it can get a bit messy and I don't really have a designated space for crafts, even though I do craft as well. So I might use that space over there for that. Beside my cutting table, I have my little cube shelf where I keep my seasonal fabrics and the fabrics that I'll be using currently. So that's why they're all close to my cutting table and not into my closet storage, which I'm going to show you next. I swap things out so that way I always see what I have, what's available to me, and what I might need when it's time to go shopping. And I try and use my close storage like my closet for um, extras and things I might not need at the moment so that way the room doesn't look too cluttered. This is the first closet. I use these clear shoe holders to hold all of like my um, ribbons, trims, bias tape and things of that nature. It's really easy to see what's inside so it's easy for me to tell what it is that I have. And then this is also where I store the bulk of my fabric. So this closet has a garage shelf unit in it and I fold my fabric on top. It's kind of messy because I did swap around Christmas and fall for spring and summer. And this fabric being more bulky, it's a little bit harder to store as flat as my spring and summer was. But I'm going to go into detail on each shelf and how they're supposed to be organized. Top row is usually where I keep all of like my quilting cotton and stuff. I do have this beautiful brocade and I can't wait to share what I'm gonna make with it. And because I didn't want it all crinkled up, I set it on top of my cotton. But um, I swapped this out seasonally. So if you can see, I have some fall fabric here and I have some Christmas fabric there. That's because I've already removed most of my summer fabrics and put it on a little shelf outside of this closet. And down here has some more fall fabrics and some knits that I just shoved in here. Uh, but usually this shelf is for suitings only. So you can see underneath I have some suiting fabric. But usually only suiting goes here and the knits do not go there at all. Here we have some of my wools, my heavier wool suitings. And then at the very bottom we have... Um, my utility fabrics. So I have some faux fur there. I have some buck ram, stabilizers, 
batting, cotton batting. Here I have some vinyl. This is the leftover vinyl from that raincoat fabric, that raincoat project. And then I have some foam here. And then I have some of my Gertie patterns that I purchased on like a plotter scale to make it a little bit easier. And then I have like a large roll of vinyl because I'm supposed to be reupholstering some dining room chairs from the 50s. I'm supposed to be completely restoring it and that project's taking me a while. So this is the second closet. I'm using it as storage right now. It houses my modern patterns that I probably still need to prune and get rid of more. And then it also has the vintage patterns for my kids that they don't fit into yet. So I swap those out so there's, there's more room on my pattern shelf. Then I have all of my craft supplies there. So those are general non-sewing related craft supplies, glitter, hole punchers, glue guns, staple guns. Anything you would need for general crafting is on there and it's also in a clear shoe rack so that way it's easy for me to see. And then in the Home Depot box, I actually have scraps of my wallpaper so that way I can use that for like decorating and stuff like that. Um, I actually have some projects I wanna use that extra wallpaper for and so I just haven't gotten around to it so I keep it in that box. This is the last closet. This holds my outfits that I don't want to get crushed and so eventually these items will be moved to the other closet because this closet in particular does not have a ceiling yet. Uh, we're probably going to put one in eventually but right now I can just swap things around. It also holds all of like my Cricut vinyl accessories on the floor like vinyl scraps and things of that nature. I have a wonderful friend who has a t-shirt business who sends me all of her scraps so that way I can use for my Cricut. So that's where I house that and I have like an extra piece of pegboard that I'm sure I'm going to cut down and put someplace else for more storage. And then this wall with the light switch should have had wallpaper on it but I messed up on cutting the wallpaper and I haven't decided if I want to order more wallpaper to put it there or if I want to put a second coat of paint to you know have it painted okay so let's talk about my dress forms i have a couple as you've seen scattered throughout this video i have two little ones which are display forms for my kids and then i have one display form for me and then i also have this professional dress form on the left i bought the professional dress form last year as a treat to myself because i've only ever used the display form which i can't really drape on and it's no longer my proportions um it wasn't necessarily my proportions before but it's even less now so that i have lost all of my bust to breastfeeding so i have this one over here which is a size zero it's very close to my measurements with the bust being too big it has removable shoulders and i really like it so far it's very durable and it's a pinnable dress form i really look forward to learning new skills with that dress form i use it for helping me alter patterns by myself and do some fittings and so i would like to eventually learn how to drape and then i'll just do like a small bust adjustment or wear like a padded bra if need be to make up for the bust being a little larger than my own. So now we have the sewing machines that I keep in my desks. This is my Singer Futura. It is a 1970s machine. It's in its original desk. It came with all of the original notions that the owner pretty much just sent with the desk. Underneath it on the left, I have my Singer Featherweight. It's eventually going to end up on a shelf nearby. I kind of want to keep my singers together. And that sewing machine case over there is a modern case, but it stored my 1910s Singer, which is no longer in that case, but located in my room because I use that machine upstairs in my bedroom. And if you would like to see a video of me using that machine, you can go ahead and check it out. To my main sewing machine, this chair actually belongs to the Futura and I reupholstered it and I by reupholster I literally just stapled this fabric over the top of the original fabric um, and then it has storage and this is where I keep my buttonholer attachments and um, some sewing machine accessories, templates for the buttonholer 
um, some extra bobbins, and I keep just random accessories in here. The desk also has a little bit of storage where I keep more bobbins and machine foot feet. The Q foot, the original Q foot for this machine is in here. Um, some needles are in here and some screwdrivers are also in here. So I relocated my ironing board to separate my sewing machines because I felt like it would be easier to sew here and then press right here. The ironing board used to be located on the pattern side of my sewing room and so I'd have to get up from here and then go press over there and it just didn't make any sense. I eventually plan on adding my serger combs on this column and then put some of my thread holders close by to the sewing machines because right now I do have it across the way which makes absolutely no sense but um, I'm going to show you a really cool thing in the Futura um, desk that makes thread a little bit more accessible once I decide to start storing thread over there. So the Kenmore is right here the one that I use the most because it just has the most sentimental value to me. I do use all of my sewing machines so um, if you look right here on the Futura desk, this little rack comes up and it holds thread. So I'm going to add some more thread storage, but that is also there for my convenience. Next we have my other Kenmore. This is a deluxe machine. It does monogramming. It does a bunch of decorative stitches, all of those things. And this was also given to me by the original owner. It was an anniversary gift, if I'm not mistaken. And it has all of its accessories in these drawers. Kenmore put all of their accessories in these little books. So you have the accessories and button holder in this book. And then below that, I also have some of the other accessory books underneath. I also keep serger cones in that last drawer and all of my serger accessories in these drawers. I absolutely adore these old machine desks. They completely fold down as well. So now I would like to show you how all these vintage desks convert and get smaller. These are all the original desks that came with the machine except for the black desk. I found that separate but it did come from another Kenmore sewing machine. This footage is all in real time so you can see how quickly they close down. I want to thank you all for being here. I truly appreciate all of the support that I got and for helping my channel grow. It's meant the world to me. Thank you to my patrons and my Kofi donors who go the extra mile to support my craft and this channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sure I will have to do an update because I want to add decor. I want to hang and display my other sewing machines. And since moving into this space, I've only bought the two cube shelves, so I would love to get a little bit more furniture for storage so things are stored more neatly and has its place. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. I'd love to answer them for you and give you some more clarity. Thank you for everybody who showed up to my very first live stream. It was just supposed to be a little test stream and over 200 of you showed up and supported the stream and I was so happy with your support. If you want some more content from me sooner than next week, then go ahead and subscribe to my Patreon where I have some exclusive videos up now. This week's Patreon exclusive is a sneak peek into my project planning methods as well as an upcoming project. I also have the decals for my casserole carrier and my raincoat available on there as well. Have a safe and wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!